disclaimer to the Altar Guild, I really do believe in keeping our things nice, so thank you for the work you do. And the felt bags are good, and I understand, but thank you for a sermon illustration. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace to you all from God our Father, from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus hears from the Pharisees that Herod wants to kill him. And we know from the scripture that the Pharisees aren't necessarily Jesus' biggest fan base. So if the Pharisees warn Jesus about Herod, we know what a big deal Herod is. We know Herod's family from the gospel. How this family has been clutching onto power for as long as they possibly can with a white knuckled grasp. The Herod that we hear about today is the son of the Herod who tried to take Jesus out at the beginning of the story when he was first born. This is the same Herod that arrested John and brought his ministry to the end order to satiate the bloodlust of a dancing daughter. Herod has a predatory power. Herod is the kind of man who symbolizes the ways that in our lives we are chased by those who would succeed at our expense. When we talk about Herod, we're looking at the predatory powers that exercise influence and use their privilege to push you down. We're talking about everything from the coworker who steals credit for your work, to the classmate who cheats off of your test, to the commercials that interrupt your favorite television shows to inform you how unworthy you are of anything good. The predatory powers of this world are out like a fox to devour anything that is good, anything that is holy, anything that is true. And where God's image stands in front of us, even the Pharisees will warn that the fox is out. But Jesus stands up to the predatory powers of this universe. He is not willing to tailor his mission to their convenience. He is not willing to step out of their cross... Crossfires? Crosshairs? I don't know much about hairs. He is not willing to be in their bullseye just to make his life easier. Jesus stands up to the predatory natures of this universe and he says, go tell that fox that I am at work, that I have a mission to do here, that I am not going to try to knock everyone else down so that I can be a god sitting higher on a throne in the sky. No, my work is this. I am taking care of the people I meet. I am listening to the lonely ones who have been abandoned up to this point in their life. I'm casting out the demons that look at God's children and think you are a worthy home for the slow death that rests in our soul when we begin to trust the messages that we are not worthy of being loved. Jesus says, I have work to do today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I will make sure that I stand up victorious, and I will take my people with me, but I will not put any of it on hold for the predatory fox that chases you in life, for the fox that would even come after my own life. And Jesus isn't a dumb man. He knows the predatory forces that are out against him. He knows that his own closest beloved will pretend like they've never met him. He knows that his family will distance themselves from him. He knows that the city of Jerusalem itself, the holy city that welcomes him today, will shout crucify tomorrow. 
But then Jesus does a very interesting thing for me and for you, for the people that he meets who hold on to that predatory nature. Jesus looks at that city that will turn against him and he cries for it, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you, even though you would attack me, you, even though you would crucify me, you, even though you will take my broken body and devour me the way that a fox eats a hen in the farmyard, you still aren't children of a fox. You are not the children of the evil in this world that leads a man to drive around a city targeting children on its streets. You are not the children of the forces that will take your neighbors out just to make you look better. You're not the children of the kind of jealousy and hatred that Herod knew in his life where he was willing to exterminate anyone who threatened his momentary claim to a throne. Jesus looks at you, Jesus looks at me, Jesus looks at that city of Jerusalem and says, the fox is coming to eat its hen, but you are my children. You grow out of the eggs that I warm and hatch. You are the chicks that run in my presence that are cute and fluffy and a little bit dumb at the moment, but you'll grow up and grow out of chasing a pecking order where you satisfy your hunger on worms when you come to a place when I open my arms and welcome you under my wings. When I say to you, oh my church, oh my people, how I have longed for you to know whose children you truly are. And I will welcome you into that safety and security. Herod is a fox. Those predatory powers are out to get him. But Jesus is the hen, the weak one. The vulnerable one, the parental one. Jesus trades all the predatory power of the universe for the parental love to take us in, to lay himself over us, to say to the fox, come eat me. And while you devour my body and drink my blood, my people will be safe underneath it. And the time will come when those children welcome Jesus into their midst with palms in their hands, shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Hosanna in the highest! They won't know how good they have it until that Good Friday when he is lifted up and his arms are stretched out and finally those people, that city of Jerusalem, the Jerusalem we still call our home, we won't know how good we have it until his arms are stretched and finally from the base of that hill we find ourselves under the shadow of his wings where he calls us home to be loved and safe. For all the predatory powers in this world, we are given the good news to go tell that fox we are not children of a lie. We are children of the one who gives us life. Life we don't deserve, but life for which we are so thankful. We are children under the wings of a Savior who opens his life, that we might have life abundantly. So go tell that fox the good news that puts an end to it, 
that the good news is all we have. Amen. <laughs>